Is the government considering privatizing health care? The NDP says it is. The PCs say they are not. However, the NDP gave the media this leaked draft bill that they say proves that they are going in the road of privatization. If there is any doubt that this government is committed to massive privatization in health care, that doubt vanishes with this bill. The NDP claimed the draft bill would dissolve local health integration networks and create a super agency that would oversee a centralized system. The document doesn't clearly spell out privatization, but the NDP says it doesn't contain any restrictions on who can provide health care, which they believe creates the possibility of privatizing more health services and even selling your medical data. Now, Health Minister Christine Elliott uh, gave a news conference that was called shortly after the NDP made these claims, and she came out swinging. She says this is just early proposed draft legislation, and she says this clearly, the NDP claims clearly shows they don't understand health care. Andrea Horvath's lack of understanding of our health care system has never been more apparent. Dating back to the 15 years of Liberal governments led by McGuinty and Wynne, the NDP have been crying wolf about the privatization of the health care system. It wasn't true then, and it isn't true now. Our government for the people strongly believes in our public health care system and is strongly committed to improving <coughs> public health care for patients. Now, Christine Elliott did acknowledge that Ontario's health care system is on life support and in dire need of an overhaul. All of this has completely overshadowed another report by Doug Ford's health care advisor, Dr. Ruben Devlin. He's been tasked with ending hallway medicine, and his report came out earlier today, and his findings echo ones that we've been telling you about on City News for years. Devlin's report finds each day approximately 1,000 patients are waiting on stretchers for a hospital bed. 41% of people who went to emergency departments could have been treated by their primary health care provider. And there was a 72% increase in emergency department visits for children and youth with mental health issues over the last 11 years. Now, I spoke with Dr. Devlin about his report today, and he'd like to see more home care provided so seniors can stay in their homes longer, which would help ease the burden on long-term care, which we have a grave shortage of. Uh, he also wants to see more mental health care services in communities, and he believes we need to use technology to help people from ever even having to go to the hospital. There is that potential to create community command centers where we are able to monitor patients at home and use some of the artificial intelligence to determine when patients might get into trouble so that we can intervene sooner. That means a visit to their physician's office as opposed to a visit to the emergency department and avoided admission to hospital.